had Jordan go for over 100 yards again last week. But this week, you, you face a big challenge. Miami has one of the best run defenses in the country. Mm -hmm. Is that mainly because of the linebacker play, or what do you see up front from that? Well, the two linebackers are NFL guys. I mean, I mean they're when you look at them on tape, you know, they're like, they stand up. You know, they're, they're downhill, they're aggressive. They have great instincts. They've played a lot of football. You know, they could cover up a lot of things. You know, if somebody slides off a block or, you know, there's a gap, they close those gaps quickly. Um, so we do have a challenge ahead of us. You know, the thing for us um, is I think we've run the ball really well. Our, our run numbers are good. Statistically, our run numbers are good. When you break us down week to week, um, all different schemes. <clears throat> you know, we've been fairly consistent with, with all the different things that we've been trying to do. Uh, week to week may not be the same plays, may not be the same formations, but in general, we've done a good job uh, being able to run the ball and, and, and for the most part, control the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, really, really good in spurts. You know, other times hit or miss, but I think if you look at our total run numbers and our total run efficiency, which we calculate every week, um, I'm happy, you know, with where they are. It is going to be a good test, um, you know, but in, we have some good players and, you know, JP makes people miss. And so, um, you know, we're gonna, we have to continue to feed him the ball. In terms of the, the passing game and the development, are you comfortable with kind of, are you seeing the progress that you'd like to see week to week in terms of James and his performance mm -hmm. and what he's seeing out there? The progress has been positive, but not where we need to be. We're still extremely um, inconsistent from a protection standpoint, from a uh, quarterback location standpoint. Um, you know, our completion percentage needs to be near 60%, <clears throat> I would say. You know, historically, we're probably 64, 65%. Um, and I think that that's what we're, we're striving for. Um, Hidden in that a little bit is that we're taking a bunch of shots down the field. So the 50-50 balls are going to decrease your, your numbers, you know. So maybe, you know, uh, compared to some of the teams that we've been involved with in the past, we're probably taking a lot more shots down the field um, to try to create some explosive plays. And in doing so, your percentage is going to drop. So, you know, if we could be in the mid-50s, I think that that would be a solid percentage for us. Um, but we have to do a better job across the board, you know, route-wise. Uh, we've caught the ball well. You know, we had two drops on Saturday, which hurt us. Um, but in general, that has not been an issue. James's growth as a quarterback has been tremendous. Um, anyone who's watched him uh, from the beginning of the year and sees him now and knows anything about football is going to know that um, his growth is, has been uh, on a very high climb. Um, but he's still got a long way to go. He's still a young guy. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, in this league, he faces so many different things week to week from a uh, a front standpoint, coverages, where to go with the ball, and we're trying to expand our pass game. Um, so when those two forces meet each other, there's a lot of things that he's never seen before, and it's, he's kind of reacting on his own. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a go out and, and, you know, execute the game plan type deal. He's done a good job with that, understanding so much more about football and about the pass game and protections and, and those type of things. Uh, the thing that you cannot take away from him is he's extremely athletic. Uh, he made a tremendous amount of plays for us on Saturday with his feet, um, avoiding sacks, getting out of the pocket, dumping the ball. Um, and then it was two or three times where he progressed to his third read <clears throat> and dropped the ball off. I think we had a third and long. And he dropped one off to Adonica Sanders on like a little, shallow, <clears throat> a little shallow route. And we got the first down. That's, that's huge progress for a young quarterback to be able to get to your third read and, and dump the ball and, and just be patient in the pocket. Um, and he was getting hit. You know, so, um, you know, for, for him to stand in there and have the conviction to stand in the pocket was really, really good. And, um, you know, as we've talked about in the past, as a play caller, you have to try to, you know, hide, uh, you know, what you're doing and give them as many different looks so that they can't just tee off on the protection and the quarterback. Um, so we'll continue to do that on, on third down. <clears throat> Brown has is, is averaged over 22 yards a catch. Nine nine catches. Mm -hmm. Is he a guy you want to get more touches because of his big playability? Yeah, and, and I think I think a piece of that can be you know can, how many more times can we get it to him short, you know? And uh, he's a he's a quick little guy, and he can make somebody miss. So, you know, 
part of that that process is can you screen it to them can you flip it to them can you hand it to them can you throw them just a little slant or a rollover or things like that and let them get a catch and run um, type deal so you know we, we've, we've talked about that a lot and even, even in the game we had three or four of those called we had a few slants called and a few rollovers called and the ball went to a different direction but um, yeah I mean you know when you watch the defenses now I mean that the DB looks out there he sees number 10 and he, he takes a couple steps back as you know a lot of those a lot of those balls have gone over his head and that catch that he made on that goal ball down the sideline was fantastic. It was, at, you know, you can't catch it any better than he did on that play. So, yeah, I mean, he's a real weapon. I'm really excited that we have him um, and that his continued growth. And, um, you know, with, with a lot of those guys, Tobias also, I think, is another one of those guys where he has a lot of, uh, you know, catch and run ability. So, um, you know, being able to throw some control pass game and get those, those guys the ball in space, you know, it will be something that we look at moving forward. Something else about um, Amari, and can you describe just obviously him producing the way he has in his first year is all unusual. Can you describe the progress you've seen him make from the time he got here in January? Until so day one of spring ball, we went out and we were watching the, the guys run and really not knowing much about any of the guys at that point. Had watched you know the game film of the guys that had been here and, and that type of thing. And I turned to Kerry Dixon, I said, that's our starting slot. Like, like within you know, eight, eight reps. He's sudden, he's smart, because as a slot receiver, you have to be football smart, because a lot of what we do in the pass game are conversion routes. So if they're in this defense, you do this. If they're in this defense, you do this. And the route changes based on the coverage. So he was able to handle that very well. He studied well. He, he picked up the offense well um, coming out of the gate. And, you know, <clears throat> he ran a time uh, last Thursday in practice that we've never seen on our, on our catapult system in the three years that we've run it, you know, which was amazing. And I was like, okay, you know, that just kind of, you know, it, it's, it's a great comfort level for me to be able to say, you can put that kid one on one and, and he can make you miss going down the field because he just has, he just has natural ability. He's got a natural feel for how to play. Um, he weaves himself in and out of traffic really well. A couple times on Saturday, they grab him, you know, because he's a littler guy. So he's got to learn how to get off of people and keep his hands, off, you know, keep their hands off of him. Um, but his development has been fantastic. Anything else for Coach Batman? Got the last one. Um, I guess going forward, kind of from here, what you're saying, the development of the past game is, is probably like a big priority for the you know, next several weeks. Mm -hmm. I, like, I would think is is going more like seven man protections or, or, or doing things differently gonna be one thing you're looking at as far as how to how to take the next steps. Yeah, well I'm not gonna tell you if I'm gonna go seven man protections <laughs> and, and and let Miami know, but I mean if you watch us on film, we are five man protection, get the ball out quick. We're six man protection helping, you know. Uh, seven man protections, if you saw us on Saturday, we're we're in like a double wing set trying to help the tackles. You know, double chipping, kind of like a pro style, uh, max protecting, screening, sprinting, quick game, empty, um, and we have to be able to develop all of that. You know what I mean? We can't if we just sit in, in a in a seven man protection, the, and the defense knows that it's a seven man protection, they'll run a seven man protection beater. You know, um, so you have to be multiple. You have to move the pocket. Um, and you have to give them different looks. So even in the course of that game, we did all of those things on third down. Um, and you know, James made a bunch of throws and he missed a few. I mean, he missed a, he missed a bias on a wide open post that, you know, is a 75 yard touchdown pass um, that we have to make. And, and I think Coach Thacker talked about it earlier. When playmakers are put in a position to make plays, you got to make plays. Like if you're in a one on one block, you got to make the block. And if you're in a one-on-one -on -one route or one-on-one -on -one throw, playmakers have to make plays. Ultimately, um, we're going to put them in the best position, teach them the most that we can, make the best call that you can make. And when you're, when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you have to win. You know, and elite teams right, have elite dudes making elite plays you know, offensively. And so we're so up and down um, with that right now. You know, maybe it's a little bit of an overthrow. We dropped a couple, right? Tyler Davis had a good day on Saturday. He dropped the first down right in his hands, you know? Um, or maybe it was a pressure or the cue looked the wrong way or, you know, so it's a continual growth that way. But, um, 
you know, I'm happy with what we're doing, and we're doing a bunch of different things <clears throat> in the past game than, than we did even in the beginning of the season. So I think, you know, watching us overall, you know, they have a lot to prepare for in the past game.